Hi everyone, today is Monday, October 5th, and I am losing my voice from the wedding. I am now Mrs. Grimsley, but you could still call me Miss Hester. I'm not gonna change my name with the school until next year. So if you would like to get out the chapter two math, so get out chapter two math, and turn to page 93, 93, 93. But in the morning, I did share pictures of uh, my wedding, and then we did watch the flag salute from Friday that uh, Dr. Summers always sends out. So that's what we did in the morning. And then we went to page 93 in our math. It is our review for our math brain check for chapter two. Okay, we only worked on the first page, and then some of the rest is for homework. All right, so number one. Mia made a tally table to record the different types of birds she saw at the bird feeder in the garden. We have birds at the feeder, that's our title. The name, this is the category. So these are the names of the birds and it is a tally chart, so that's why we have our tallies. We always wanna write the number of the tally next to it so it's easier to work with when we get to our questions. So jays, we have four, sparrows, 12, Finches, eight, and blackbirds, six. For numbers 1A through 1C, select true or false for each statement. I crossed off 1A. I still want to do it on the review, but we didn't practice it enough, so this type of question will not be on the brain check, but I did, again, want to still go over it. So Mia saw twice as many sparrows as blackbirds. Is that true or false? When it says twice, you add two times of the same number. So we're trying to find out if Mia saw twice as many sparrows than blackbirds. So the smallest number, the least greatest value is six, right? Because when you compare six to 12, six is the smallest number. So you want to add it two times. Six plus six is 12. Oh, okay. Well, it is true. So Twice as many blackbirds is 12. And look, she saw 12 sparrows, so it is true. 1B, Mia saw eight finches. So go up to finch. True, she saw eight. Mia saw four fewer jays than blackbirds. So we need to find our key numbers. Four is their answer. So we have to see if their answer is true or false. So we circle J's and blackbirds. Those are our two key numbers. Let's go up to J's. We have four. That's why I wrote four. Go to blackbirds. There's six. That's why I wrote six. Our math verbs are fewer and than. That means to subtract. So we evaluated and set up our math problem. Six subtract four. Then we solve two. So it's actually me to solve two two fewer J's than blackbirds, not four, so it is false. Oops, part A. Jake asked 25 students in his class how close they lived to school. The frequency table shows the result. It's a frequency table because we have numbers. We have miles to school. Miles is our category, about one mile, about two miles, about three miles. We have our boys column and our girls column. Part A, we are doing, I just wrote, I crossed it out because on the um, brain check, I'm not going to have them complete it because we have never had to fill in just one section of a chart before, but I wanna go over it because it may come up in the future. So part A, complete the table and explain how you found the answer. Well, if we know he has 25 total students, we first want to add up all the numbers we do have. So we have four plus five plus four plus two plus three. That is written here. We are, so the total students we have so far is 18. Well, he asked um, 25 total students. So now we do 25 subtract 18 gives us seven. So that means there must have been seven students left that he didn't put on the chart. So that's why we wrote seven. 
Part B, how many more students live about two miles or less from school than students who live about three miles from school? Show your work. We wanna do cubes. We start off with you, underline the question. The whole problem is the question, so you don't need to do that. We need to circle our key numbers. This one is a little trickier because it says about two miles, but we're not rounding. The category is about one mile, about two miles, about three miles. So this is all together. So about two miles, about three miles. This one says about two miles or less. And we did work on a problem like this. When it says or less or, or more, we need to figure out, well, what is less than two on this chart? One is less. So also when we see or, when it comes to the chart, it means and. So it wants you to figure out two miles and less which is one mile. So that's why I put a box. So we had to add up all these numbers. So four plus five is nine, seven plus four is 11, nine plus 11 is 20. And we have three miles. Three miles, we added three plus two equals five. So we have five students who walk three miles, about three miles to school. Now we needed to do our box, our math verb. We have one than. Again, about is not one. I should actually circle it with there. Less is not one because it's just referring to the chart. We're not subtracting. It's just telling you, I want to know about two miles or less. We know than means to subtract. So we need to evaluate, set up a math problem. So we need 20 subtract five. Now we need to solve. Zero is smaller than the downstairs neighbor five. When the top number is smaller, you have to borrow. So that's why your two becomes a one, and then your zero becomes a 10, because you just put a one in front of the zero, which makes it a 10. 10 subtract five is five. One subtract nothing is one. So 15 more students. So we solved and then labeled our answer. All right, for homework, again, I want you to try. Of course, your parents can help you out, but if you're really struggling, then you can wait till tomorrow. I want you to try to see what you could do without anyone's help. That's the point of this homework. So page 94, 94, number three, four, and five. So three, and this is our picture graph. Pay attention to our key. Question number four, question number five, do not do question number six. Flip it over to page 95. I want you to do number seven, part A, part B, and number eight. So we have number seven. We have part B. You're going to have to turn this data, this frequency chart, into a picture graph. They gave you the key. One circle equals two fish. You need to do part B and question number eight. So that is your math homework. And we pulled out our third grade language arts. This is what I passed out on Thursday. And please write your name. We need to start writing all our names on our paper. Get us ready for when we do come back to school. And it helps me with grading. So on the, we started it. You're supposed to finish it for homework. Behind the sequency is your picture. So if you did not cut out the pictures, you can go ahead and do that. And then we put them into categories. So we had our snowman up here, our flower down here. It's okay if you did vice versa. Then we put them in order. Okay. So we need to color and cut is step number one. The pictures on the next page and glue, step number two, them into the boxes below in the correct sequence. Sequence just means in order. Remember we talked about our words first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Then after, before. Finally, okay, also, these are all sequence words to tell you a story in order. That is so important because you are not going to say, first, the snowman was complete. Next, we had to roll snow into a ball. Doesn't make sense. You cannot have a complete snowman without making it first, all right? So that's why we put it in order. So we said, first, roll snow into a ball. Second, 
stack the snowballs on top of each other. Third, put a hat, eyes, nose, and mouth on your snowman. We forgot to add arms, but that's okay. We put in order our seed. So we have our seed that we put into the ground. It started to bloom and then it's fully grown. So I want you to write first, second, third, write those steps in. And third got cut off. So you can just write third. We had a walk to learn. And then we pulled out our third grade writing. Again, put your name. This was passed out on Thursday. Turn to the first page. And we are gonna start our third grade autobiography. So auto means self. So it is a story about yourself. So I'm gonna send this to on through Parent Square just so you're aware. So your third grader will be writing a story about himself or herself. Please help your child by discussing and thinking of interesting stories about the following topics at home. You can add your own categories if you want to. Thank you. So the categories we have that you will write caveman notes, which that means is just bullet points. You're not writing complete sentences, whatever you need to write to remind you of that story. So talk about with your parents, your aunt, your uncle, whoever you're at home with the day you were born. I was born in Bakersfield. That's why I wrote that. And I was, it was really quick. My mom went to the hospital and I was out within 30 minutes. So I was born within 30 minutes. So it was really quick. My school days. So I want you to write about maybe you have one favorite memory about school. Like if you made gingerbread houses in kindergarten or first grade, and um, that was a special day to you, it was a precious moment, that's something you can put a bullet point on. And you can put a bunch in here. These are just your thoughts and ideas. Your great moments in life. So talk about it with your parents. What were their great moments with you? Like maybe you, um, when you first learned to tie your shoe, when you lost your first tooth, when you learned how to walk, when you learned how to ride a bike, okay? My hobbies, sports, and interests. Hobbies are what you like to do. I have a lot of students who love to draw, who love to paint, who love to color. That is a hobby. Sports, if you like watching sports, if you like playing sports, if you don't like sports, then don't write about that. Interests, what do you like? Maybe you really love sea otters. I really love sea otters. I enjoy them. Um, so that would be one of my interests. People and pets you love. So you can write about your pets here, your siblings, your family, your friends. You can write about stories about them, though. So you can write a story about your mom, a story about your dad, your aunt, your uncle, grandparents, grandma. But um, here you don't have to write out the full story, just thoughts and ideas. I just want you to start it for homework. This all does not have to be done today. Just try to do two. Pick two and work on two for tonight for homework. And this is just to remind me that I assigned starting with our notes on October 5th, which is today. Then you have science that you can start working on and then you need to read for 30 minutes. And that is your homework and that's what we did today. Thank you.